This is a short video about how a company's revenue may be positively impacted by its implementation of sustainability projects. Looking at the three justifications that frame the business case for sustainability, the revenue benefit fits into the capture new opportunities category. And specifically what it does is acknowledge that a company's reputation on environmental and social issues can generate more loyal customers or even attract new ones and that leads to revenue growth. There are four ways that companies can capitalize on this opportunity to grow their revenue and the first one is by offering innovative sustainability products. For example, these nine green giants have developed products that they consider to be green or more energy efficient or uh, more organic or healthier. Uh, so they have attributes that are associated with sustainability and they're doing very well on those. In fact, those revenue streams have grown faster than other revenue streams and they're making over a billion dollars a year from those product lines. And the nice thing is that their stock is not suffering whatsoever from this focus on sustainability oriented products. So these are not stupid companies. These, are, these companies are doing this for good business reasons. And you'll notice that there's good evidence that sustainability products and revenues from those products grow faster than other revenue streams, more traditional, more cash cow type revenue streams. So this is a, an exciting thing for businesses that start to discover that the reputation as a company that cares about some of the same things that their customers care about is driving additional revenue and that's good for the business. So let's look at how their strong brand reputation and social license to operate can drive additional business, especially with consumers. There's some evidence that green consumers are consumers who want to do business with a company that has uh, values and beliefs similar to their own, especially on issues like environmental and social issues. So they would like a company to be more proactive on these issues and if they sense that it is, they want to do business with it. So that's one way to attract consumers. The reputation of the company matters. That's what this is all about. That people's willingness to buy, recommend, work for and invest in a company is driven significantly by their perceptions of the company. So looking at the buy part, there's some evidence in this, this organization, the Reputation Institute, Institute uh, keeps track of the reputation of companies based on the six different aspects that you're looking at here. So some has to do with social, some has to do with environmental, some has to do with the way in which they treat their employees. But what they do is they take a look at how strong the reputations of those companies are. And the companies with the best reputations very often are the companies that are finding that their revenue is positively impacted by that reputation in the marketplace as a company that cares about similar things to what their customers care about. Here's another way of depicting the six factors that contribute to the corporate reputation. You'll notice at the top there's social responsibility, which also wraps in environmental responsibility, the way in which the company um, builds trust by showing that they care about and feel about things the way in which their customers do, as well as the way in which they treat their employees. So those are just another ways of reinforcing the fact that, that this stuff matters to consumers more and more these days. And this slide just reinforces that more and more consumers, global average being 55%, are willing to pay extra for uh, products that they consider to be more sustainable or, or greener products coming from companies that share their values. Uh, how much more? That's a big question. And you'll notice that in North America, it's a little under 50%, but it's growing in all jurisdictions on an annual basis. It's not only the business to consumer kinds of revenue that is being improved as well because of these sustainability initiatives by companies, but also business to business. Business customers are starting to ask questions about these attributes more than they used to. And the way in which they do that is usually called sustainable procurement. And you'll notice that sustainable procurement takes into account not only the track record of the suppliers who are producing the products, but also the attributes of the products themselves. So what you see here is a list of 11 dif different dimensions or practices of responsible procurement. 
you'll notice that it is uh, looking for the products or the companies that are producing those products, acting on the kinds of issues that are more top of mind these days, like energy issues, carbon issues, water issues, waste issues. Um, they take a look at those attributes over a uh, total owner, total life of the product that the company is going to own. So total cost of ownership calculations. So if the, if the product is using less energy, producing less waste, that's going to be cheaper to be able to uh, operate and the product gets credit for that. And you'll notice that, it, that these companies are integrating sustainability development criteria into calls for tenders and in other phases of the procurement process. In other words, this stuff matters. The, the companies that are buying these products are companies that may have publicly declared that they care about these things. And this gives them a chance to display that they're putting their money where their mouth is and trying to ensure that their suppliers and their supply chains are also improving their impacts on the environment and society. So companies that are intentionally and consciously trying to improve their sustainability attributes of both the company as well as their products are able in some cases to be able to differentiate themselves from their competitors and to be able to win bids in the B2B arena. Another way that companies may find that their revenue is growing is that they may be accommodating circular economy notions in the new kind of economy. And as they do that, and provide services rather than products, they take back the products at the end of their useful life and make sure that they don't escape into the environment, especially landfills. And they find that this approach to their business model allows them to capitalize on services and new revenue streams. For example, when I joined IBM many, many years ago, it was a hardware company. It, uh, it sold computing products, IT hardware, to the data processing function. And now what it is, it's a services company. So in 2014, only 11% of its revenue came from hardware and the rest of it came from services, software, and financing. That's a totally different business model. And as companies start to understand this potential, they're gonna be flowing into this, this business model uh, because it's better for business as well as better for the environment, especially as we think of the attributes of a circular economy. As these reasons to sell services show, especially on this right hand side, it builds barriers to exit, which means that it's easier to keep customers because you're using their products on a lease basis, as well as you get to know the customer's business quite well and can make more valuable recommendations on how they might be able to use your products to improve their performance. So you build more loyalty with those customers. So we've looked at four different ways in which the revenue streams might be improved. And uh, as you think about this mix and the different ways that these uh, opportunities might be captured as the company moves into a more sustainable business model, uh, you're gonna need to make some estimates in the business case worksheets and workbooks that are available to you. So here are some tips on how to make those estimates uh, and it really encourages you to don't do them by yourself. So the first two tips say work with others in your company that have uh, detailed knowledge of the area that you're looking at. In the case of revenue, you'd want to talk to the data owners who are in the marketing department and maybe finance and strategy and research and development may have some thoughts as well. Uh, you may be able to extrapolate from previous company experience on this. Others in your sector, others in organizations that you're members of that are into this as well. Take a look at whatever research might be out there. Uh, there are a lot of comment boxes in the worksheets that you may be able to benefit from as well based on the research that I've done. And make sure that if you are gonna make a swag, <laughs> that you do it in a conservative way um, and show that the, there may be some sensitivity to the amount that you use there depending on the results that you're, you're looking for. But make sure that you protect your credibility. So there's no magic to this. It's a forecast, all forecasts are estimates. Um, but the more people you engage in that estimate, the more credible it's going to be. So I encourage you to take a look at that and see if you can use this as a significant benefit of the opportunity for companies to convert to more sustainable strategies, practices, and be able to add to the revenue stream as a direct result of that.